years, reports of chemical abuse and worker mistreatment have surfaced in regards to overseas suppliers of leading tech companies. Project Green Apple representatives uncovered shocking results in our own chemical tests and first-hand footage of these factories, which will be revealed in the following video. Since Apple is the current industry leader in mobile devices and computers, with sales of the iPhone and MacBook pushing revenue for 2010 into the billions, it has the power to influence others in the industry and pressure them to change. Of the tech giants, including Dell, Sony, Nokia, and Microsoft, Apple in particular has the greatest influence in the media and the greatest potential to spark change in the sector. In 2003, the environmental activist group Greenpeace ran a campaign to highlight Apple's lack of environmental standards and policies. By conducting chemical tests on Apple products, Greenpeace inspired consumers to pressure Apple to develop a more thorough sustainability platform. At the heart of the campaign was a demand for the phasing out of BFRs and PVC from products. In addition to BFRs and PVC, Apple proposed to eliminate heavy metals such as lead and cadmium. Project Green Apple wanted to see just how much progress had been made on reducing these hazardous substances in current generation Apple products, starting with the exceptionally popular iPhone 4. I'm currently seated in Northwestern's ICPMS lab, where we will be dissecting a brand new, unopened version of the iPhone 4. We've now completed the process of cutting up the phone's components into four like parts to test in different solvents. We'll now proceed to the Nuance Lab to test the phone for heavy metals. A trace amount of zirconium and yttrium were found on the antenna plastic cover. Zirconium compounds, found at a concentration of 100 parts per million, are known to cause skin and pulmonary granulomas. Workers exposed to yttrium compounds, found at a concentration of 200 parts per million, may experience mild eye, skin, and upper respiratory tract irritation. The discovery of zirconium and yttrium was rather unsurprising compared to finding bromine. In the environmental reports for iPhone and iPad, Apple maintains to define a material as BFR-free if it contains less than 900 parts per million of bromine, and says that the iPhone 4 is BFR-free. Unfortunately, we found bromine at 12,700 parts per million by weight in the layer of the iPhone touchscreen, which is 14 times Apple's own concentration limit. This may even exceed the ROHS regulation limit, a directive adopted by the European Union. We want to clarify that the ROHS has unclear guidelines for heterogeneous parts, which includes the iPhone touchscreen layer. Therefore, we are not accusing Apple of violating ROHS standards, but it is undeniable that bromine is present in the iPhone 4. To be fair, we would also like to compliment Apple on its success on eliminating mercury and cadmium from the iPhone completely. Also, we want to congratulate Apple on phasing out PVC from the iPhone 4. PVC is known to cause cancer even though it is still one of the most commonly used plastic polymers. It is commendable that Apple has phased it out completely since Dell still sells PVC-based cables on its website. In addition, Motorola is still in the process of eliminating PVC and BFRs from its products. And although Microsoft has no PVC in its packaging, it is unclear whether or not its products are PVC-free. While other companies still struggle to phase out PVC from packaging, Apple took initiative and effectively eliminated all chlorinated materials from its products. Um, well, I'll start by responding to the ones that you did not find, um, particularly mercury and cadmium. Those two compounds are heavy metals. They are very toxic to humans. They can result in um, neurological damage, and um, especially for the factory workers and 
people using the devices. It's good that you did not find them. As far as the items that you did find, bromine is um, a problem and it can cause neurological damage. I think that even though you considered it to be a high concentration, it's probably not an issue for users of the device unless they're licking their phone or something, but the workers would be exposed to this on a daily basis over a long period of time. A lot of these effects are cumulative, so that is a reason why it would be more of an issue for them working in a higher concentrations and working over longer periods of time in closer proximity to the chemicals. Mm -hmm.